Hey guys, welcome back to another video at Mr. RV Tech. Today we're going to be talking about capacitors. These particular capacitors are out of rooftop RV air conditioners. And how appropriate, the summer's getting hot now and air conditioners are going to start failing. So I'm going to show you uh, how to test a capacitor, what a capacitor is, how to determine whether they're bad or not. Uh, if you do have a failed capacitor, you can find yourself having a compressor on your air conditioner not functioning or the fan itself not functioning. So I brought three different types to the table. These ones are all good. And I'm going to show you with a voltage meter how to test them, how to understand the label, and what you should be looking for here. And also how to get a new one. All right, so in this particular example, I'd like to uh, focus primarily in this video on microfarads. So if you look here, you see this number in parentheses. You have a 60 plus five microfarads plus or minus 5%. So what does that mean exactly? Well, what that means is the capacitance level of the windings in this capacitor. So <clears throat> in order to test them, I'm gonna grab me a cameraman. We're gonna get a voltage meter up here and I'll explain exactly how we can test these windings. All right, so we've got our voltage meter set up here and I'm gonna to try to get it close so you can see. I've got it set on MFD, which is our microfarad. Now your voltage meter may be different. It may just show a small U with a capital F um, to get that reading as well, like we saw on the capacitor itself. But most good voltage meters that test capacitance are going to have an option for this. So what we're going to do if we take a look at this capacitor, for instance, if we look at the top of it, there's an embossed letter C, which stands for common. That's going to be your neutral. There's an embossed abbreviation H-E-R-M or HERM. That is your compressor side. And the reason it says HERM is that stands for a hermetically sealed unit. And then the last post here, the last winding is for the fan, and it literally says fan. So when we look at this example, we've got a 55 microfarads plus or minus 6%. So what we're looking for is on the Herm windings for the compressor, we're looking for 50 microfarads plus or minus 6%, and the fan winding should be 5 microfarads plus or minus 6%. So what you're gonna do once you get your voltage meter set up is you're always gonna put your black lead on the common or the C post. And we're gonna test our fan first, which is on this side. And remember, it was five microfarads, plus or minus 6%. As you can see, we're well within that range at 5.04. That's actually perfect. We'll let that off and clear and we will check our compressor or Herm windings. And again, we are looking for 50 microfarads plus or minus 6%. So we are well within that at 52.8. So this is good capacitor. Now, had we tested either of these windings against the common and got a reading of zero or less than 6%, or more than 6% of the 50 and 5 ratings, this would be a bad capacitor and the reason your compressor or fan are not running. So in closing, that's how you test a capacitor. Uh, the ratings on the front, the large number is always going to be your hermetically sealed unit or compressor, and the smaller unit of measure is always going to be your fan. Now, many RV air conditioners have multiple capacitors. For instance, this capacitor is strictly for the fan only, and it's only got one rating of 7.5 microfarads, plus or minus 5%. So you're not necessarily going to see these exact examples. Um, again, this is a combination fan and compressor. This is a combination fan and compressor. There are also start capacitors, which would be a third capacitor potentially with a motor starter in it. And we'll make future videos uh, regarding the motor starting and start capacitors. It is tested the same way as these are. But for now, we're gonna leave it at that. These are located in your upper unit. 
Remember to work safely. Always disconnect your shore power and turn your generator off. Make sure your inverter is off prior to touching any of these posts or wires. And lastly, contrary to popular belief, these capacitors no longer hold a charge in them, so you do not have to discharge them and short them out. Uh, after the power has been disconnected and you remove the wires, they will discharge themselves. And then you can go ahead and touch them um, safely and proceed with the testing. If you have any questions about capacitors, how to locate them, how to test them, how to read them, please message me and I will try my best to get back to you. If you like this video and you want to see future videos of how to diagnose or repair your RV, please hit the subscribe button. And uh, you all help take care. Happy camping. Have a great summer. Thanks.